after being gone for two Sundays, it's kind of like coming home. It's good to come home, but it sure was nice where we were at. Okay, just a few announcements, just a couple dates to remember. Um, we decided April 12th we'll have the preparatory service, and April 19th is communion. That is the week after Easter. So if you just kind of want to make a note of that, keep those dates open for that, that would be great. Um, if the ushers are get a mic, we'll give Javen a little bit of time here in a minute. Uh, just a few other things. I think Esther moved back home. Dave, is there anything you want to say? It's open for visitors, I'm sure. She's doing well enough for that. Okay, so Esther is back home from the Maples. Also, we did receive some money from Thomas Neoma, Neoma's estate. Uh, so we'll be talking about how we should use that. Uh, we'll give you more information on that later. Um, so, just so you know that. Okay, Javen is leaving us. Um, it's a little sad to see him go. I worked with him for a year and a half almost, so it's a double whammy, but we bless him in going. So whatever you want to say about what you're going to be doing, and if you want to introduce the person beside you, you may do that as well. I'll leave that up to you. All right, so as many of you know, I am planning to move to Jamaica um, with Jamaica Relief, or yeah, with JRM, uh, where Carl and Kristen are at. And what I'll be doing there is a new role, so I'm not exactly sure what I'll be doing there, uh, what all it includes, but they've, they um, had two things for me that they were saying are probably my main priorities or the two main things that I'll be involved in. And the first one is, I guess, just a lot of the office work for Carl. Um, he's pretty swamped and just with a lot of the administrative, if new people come over, help them with their visas. And also um, they have some locals that they pay. So help with payroll and uh, just other things in the office. And I might be getting some um, work from other like programs and stuff as far as helping them out as well in that. I'm not exactly all sure on that. Um, and then they also mentioned, um, we're hoping that I can mentor at their Joshua program. It's an empowerment program for young guys, 17 to 22 year olds who, um, if I understand correctly, were part of the foster system their whole life. And um, not necessarily were at JRM, but just part of the system their whole life and uh, are now out of high school and they, I think they are required to have a job to be part of the program but then the program is there to help them uh, find a place to live and get reintegrated into society. Um, so those are my main two. After that I think I'm just swing guy, help wherever this help is needed, which I'm also excited about. Um, that should give me a variety of things that I'll be doing there. Um, not sure if I said this already but I am committed for a year and a half at this point. Um, and as far as communicating with me, uh, I would strongly encourage WhatsApp because um, I am out of the country. Text messaging won't work, um, at least most of the time it won't, and it might charge you or me, I'm not sure. So uh, I'll, I'm gonna try to get a card to put on the bulletin board. It is my number with WhatsApp, so if you download that WhatsApp app, um, you can just put in my phone number and then uh, text me and I'll get that. Um, or email if you want to do that as well. And as far as supporting me as well, some of you have already financially, and I really, really appreciate that. Um, it is a voluntary base um, commitment, and there is a box in the back that um, you can put money in. You don't have to, but um, yeah. So if you want, I think it's there this Sunday and next Sunday as well yet. So if you want to support me in that way, I would appreciate it. But I definitely would appreciate your guys' prayers. Um, it's seems like a pretty big transition moving out of the country and there's a lot of things going on um, some really good things which I'll <laughs> talk to you about here shortly um, but um, even along with that um, the ADC youth conference I would also appreciate your guys prayers for that um, coming up May 5th through 7th and just planning that and being out of the country at the same time also looks a little big um, but it'll be doable, but it's just um, definitely need God's leading and grace in that the next couple months as well. So thank you all so much for your support, and I just appreciate and love each one of you. I'm definitely going to miss you guys and would really appreciate your prayers. Um, but I do have someone that I will introduce to you. You can stand up. 
<laughs> that way they can see you because they all know who you are probably. Uh, this is Sasha Yoder. It is Sam and Ruby's daughter. She's from Ohio and she's my girlfriend. So, <laughs> thank you. That would make her a granddaughter of Glenn and Elma, which some of our older people would know. So just to clarify. Hey, while you have the mic, why don't we just all stand? And I'm going to have Abe, if you want to just lead a prayer of blessing for Javen. And, and we would definitely want to commit to praying for you over the next year and a half. Okay, let's pray. <coughs> our Father in heaven, we come to you at this moment to honor and praise and glorify you. We thank you, Lord, for... Your mercy that is new to us today and it is new for Javen uh, every day as he faces the challenges at Jamaica. Pray that you would bless him. May you go with him. May he sense your presence in a real way. We know that you are concerned for the um, young men there and people that he works with, uh, the work there in Jamaica, and uh, we want to commit him to you. We trust you for his protection. We trust you for his uh, wisdom and guidance as he uh, works with the youth there, works with the program. May you bless them in a real way. We want to honor you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, just to open it up, are there any other announcements from the congregation? Okay, up here, James. <clears throat> I think your date for communion was going to be the 16th. Am I correct? 16th. Yeah. Did I say the 19th? You said 19th. 16th, yeah. Yeah. So it'd be the Wednesday night for preparatory. Then the right. following Sunday, 16th is communion. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay. Okay. Before we have our worship time, we have our basement students are going to sing for us. So you can come up at this time.
Thank you, children. From the rising of the sun to the going down, the name of the Lord is to be praised. And that is why, I trust that is why, we are gathered here today to worship God, to exalt him, to lift up his name, to hallow his name, like his prayer says, hallowed be your name, may your kingdom come. And I trust that worship doesn't happen just here. And we've been worshiping this morning. This is, we call this worship time, but we have been worshiping already this morning. But I trust worship not only doesn't happen just here, but it starts in your home. It starts with you. It starts with your family. And here we simply get to do it together today. And so I trust you're excited about spending some time in worship. Came across a quote by John Piper. He says, missions exist because worship doesn't. Missions exist because worship doesn't. What does he mean by that? Just expound a little bit on that. <clears throat> when life is over, when the world is over, and we gather around the throne of God with peoples of all nations, missions will be over, but worship will not. Worship will continue through eternity. And so the scripture says that worship is happening now in heaven. And so if we expect to be a part of that someday, then I think it needs to be a part of our life here now, right? Worship needs to be a part of our life here. You and I were created for worship. That's why God made us. We were made to bring honor and glory to him, to exalt his name. That's why we're here. And so the greatest activity that you and I can do is worship God. That's the greatest activity. If you want to do something great for God, worship him. That's what he wants from you and I. When Moses entreated Pharaoh on behalf of the children of Israel, God gave him these words, Let my people go that they may worship me. And I have a verse to throw up on the wall here. Exodus 9 verse 16 says, God is talking to Pharaoh but I have raised you, Pharaoh, up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. That's the reason that God ordained Pharaoh, so that his name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Amazing. And scripture is full of that. And I just want to, want to bless you with some of those thoughts today. And so missions is not merely just, that's not the the reason we do missions, missions is just the avenue of spreading worship throughout the earth. It's just the means of how we do that. <clears throat> to our neighbors, to your co-workers, to the people in prison. It's why you get on a plane and you travel to Jamaica, to Africa, to the far corners of the earth. It's why you do that. It's so that we spread God's name through worship. That's the reason we do it. But it doesn't just happen out there. It starts with me. Right here, right now, in my home. I pray that that concept would get a hold of us to our very core. I'm sure uh, you all are aware of the Asbury revival that's been happening. And you may know more than I do, and I'm just going to share this just briefly began on February 8th as a normal chapel service. And as the service came to a close, several students continued to worship, to pray and sing. And here, a week and a half later, that worship is still continuing. And of course, it got a lot of attention across the nation, and there are prominent ministers and famous singers who have been calling the university asking to lend their services. They are politely but firmly being told, you can come like anyone else, and if you can find a seat at the back of the auditorium, you're welcome to worship with us. One person writes, at Asbury, their desire is simple, to honor and serve a holy God while hosting his presence. I ask you to stand as we sing and worship today. And I, I trust this can be a time when you feel free to, you know, we're, we're, we're singing worship songs, but if you feel led to pray and you want know, to sit in your seat and pray, feel free to do that. If you want to 
kneel in prayer. It's hard to kneel in your seat. There's plenty of places over here to kneel and pray. This is, this is a worship time. And so we're not limiting you to just standing here and singing. If you feel like God wants you to pray, pray. This is, this is, this is worship time. Sing the song, We Place You on the Highest Place. Oh, we place you on the highest place, for you are the great high priest. We place you high above all else, all else, and we come to you and worship at your feet. We place you on the highest Here in this place, oh, lay your burden down, every care you carry, and come to the table of grace, for there is mercy. Just as you are, we are all unworthy to enter the presence of God, for he is holy. Lift up your heart, lift up your hands, fall on your knees and pray. For the King of kings and the love he brings is here in this place. We raise our voices, raise our song, we offer him our praise. For the King of kings and the joy he brings is here. He is here in this place. Lay your burden down, every care you carry, and come to the table of grace, for there is mercy. Just as you are, we are all unworthy to enter the presence of God, for he is holy. Lift up your heart, lift up your hands, fall on your knees and pray. For the King of kings and the love he brings is here in this place. We raise our voices, raise our song, 
we offer him our praise for the king of kings and the joy he brings is here he is here he's here he is here in this place amen If you feel like you need to sit, you're welcome to sit. But if you would like to stand, remain standing as we sing this next song, Only a Holy God. Verses are tremendous on this song. I think we're going to, for the sake of time, we're going to sing verses 1 and verse 4, and then we're going to go right into the song, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We'll sing verses 1 and 2 of this song and one and two of holy, holy, holy. <coughs> Who else commands all the hosts of heaven? Who else can make every king bow down? Who else could whisper and darkness tremble? Only a holy God. Come and behold him, the one and the only. Cry out, sing holy, forever a holy God. Come and worship the holy God. could rescue me from my falling? Who else would offer his only son? Who else invites me to call him father? Worship the Holy God. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, holy, invite uh, Sam and Brenda and my wife to come forward and LaShonda is going to play piano as we sing the song turn your eyes upon Jesus I'm going to try something a little bit different here this morning I think two weeks ago we sang the the verses the four verses to this song I'm going to put those back up there but there's also a chorus part that I have the music for that we're going to try to sing through with you 
Uh, but LaShawn is going to lead us in that. Um, and so bear with us. This is a new thing for us. So we're all learning this together. So uh, we're going to begin with turn your eyes upon Jesus, then the second verse as well, and then we're going to go into the chorus, which will have notes. Sorry, they're round notes, but they are notes. But LaShonda, go ahead. <clears throat> You may be seated. <laughs> Welcome, Holy Spirit. And it's just, again, an invitation for the Holy Spirit. I know He's here, and just verbally welcoming Him into our midst. 
After this, we'll turn the time back to the ministers. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Sorry. <laughs> like usual. <laughs> Welcome, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside of me. You're the living water, you're the everlasting fountain, comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside of me. You're the living water, you're the everlasting fountain. Comforter and Counselor, take complete control of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside of me. Fill us with your power, live inside of me. Thank you for those songs and leading us in worship. Steve, if you want to come up here, I trust that is our prayer today is just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. And we did through song, and now we want to do that through message as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just bow our heads and we just stop and we thank you for all that you have done. You are holy. You're an amazing God. And we just ask the presence of the Holy Spirit to be here today. And we pray an anointing on Steve as he brings forth a message. Just bless him as he expounds upon your word today. We pray this through Christ. Amen. As believers, is there any prayer that you could pray that is more significant than that, that we just heard in song? Bless you for sharing those with us. I invite you to turn to Matthew 25 for a message today. I'd like to begin by giving you a story. By the way, I, my cold's not getting better, it's getting worse, so I apologize for that. In 1937, a seven-year-old boy checked out a book from the Omaha, Nebraska library. The title of the book is A Thousand Ways to Make a Thousand Dollars. And in 1937, a thousand dollars was a lot of money. But young Warren read that book <clears throat> and began to sell chewing gum, sold cola, Coca-Cola, later magazines door-to-door, -door, 
At age 11, he bought three shares of stock. In 1944, in his first um, IRS, what do you call that thing that you filled out at the end of the year, tax, tax uh, whatever, he took out a $35 deduction for his bicycle and his watch for his paper route. In 1944, 1945, as a high school sophomore, he bought a used, him and a friend bought a used $25 pinball machine, placed it in a, in a barber shop. And soon, he and his friend had three pinball machines in three barber shops. And later that year, they sold their little business for $1,200. At age 14, Warren used $1,200 in savings and bought a 40-acre farm that was farmed by a tenant. By the time he finished college, he had accumulated $9,800 in savings, which is well over 100000 today. By 1957, he was part of three partnerships. By 1967, partnerships. He once convinced 11 doctors to invest $10,000 with him. He only invested 100. He got 10,000 each from 11 doctors and invested money. He kept investing by the age of 32, Warren was a millionaire 1962 in 1990 before his 60th birthday he became a billionaire and today Warren Buffett's net worth is estimated to be a hundred and eight billion dollars accumulated through savvy investing. One more little investment story. In 1988, Deborah and I went to Sarasota, Florida to begin a term of service with Choice Books, a year and a half term of service. And as we went around central and southern Florida there, I noticed that a lot of our Choice Books racks were really ugly. And I had in my heart, we need to improve these racks. Well, Christmas time came along. By the way, we lived on a meager salary. Every month, we get this little check from Ben Lapp. He was, he was the MIC secretary treasurer, and he's Velma's father. And he would always have a little note in there. But we always made it reach. We were determined to make our little salary reach. And, and we did, by the way. After 19 and a half months, we balanced anyhow. But Christmas of 88, we got a $75 Christmas bonus from Choice Books. And suddenly it clicked. There's my seed money for new racks. Called, I called, I think maybe it was Dan Byler back home, our young married Sunday school class, and I said, I need money for racks. And he contacted his young married Sunday school class, and some of you are sitting here today. And I forget the amount, but it was somewhere $2,500, $3,000 that was raised. And I was able to go to Harrisonburg, Virginia with Arlen Miller, and we purchased 25 spanking brand new, brand spanking new racks, pretty gold colored racks. And started putting those in stores, and the books jumped off of those racks. Some of those racks doubled and tripled in sales, all because of image. 
new racks. You talk about investment that paid off, paid off big time. My message title today is Eternal Investing. Eternal Investments, sorry. I like to read Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the, in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Lord, look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. Jesus, as he walked this earth, for three years in public ministry spoke many, many things. And, and somehow in his providence, the gospel writers were inspired to record some of those things that he wrote. And also in his providence, it's been, re it's been kept for us today miraculously actually that we can have our Lord and Savior Jesus who walked on this earth and we can literally pick up a Bible and literally read what he said while he walked this earth and here it is he's talking to his disciples and as he talks about the master, he's obviously talking about himself. Obviously talking about himself. And as he talks about his servants, he's talking about his disciples. And not just the disciples that were there that day, but the disciples today, you and I. This is just days before his crucifixion, and I don't know that it's makes any difference that that this is towards the end of his public ministry the end of his life on earth and yet it seems like there was some significant things that he wanted his disciples to know and he wanted you and I to know today and this little account is not just a story it's reality it says he gave his money his talents Talent is a, as a measure of weight, a measure of money. In that day, perhaps a bag of silver, we don't know. But it's his money, it's his goods that he delivers. And if I would make an, uh, 
an application for us today, I would say it is everything that you and I have as his servants. All our abilities, our intellect, our resources, the wisdom, the knowledge we have, the time we have, all those things that have been given to us by our master are his. Never forget that. What you have, what I have, are his. He gave them to us to invest. In fact, not only did he give everything to us, he gave us the ability and the power and the wisdom to invest those things. That really looks out of place. Here's the one I want. Philippians 2, 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. So if you are inspired to go to Jamaica, and by the way, Javen leaving for Jamaica was some of the impetus for this for this message this morning. But if you are inspired to go to Jamaica, if you have the ability to sit down with an ex-prisoner and talk to him about life, if you have the ability to encourage someone, if you have financial resources to bless people and bless ministries, that ability comes from not only the resources, but the ability to share it, or the impetus to share it, or the, the wherewithal to do so, comes from God himself. So he gave these servants each in a certain amount of his goods, of his money. And it says according to their ability. And they were varied amounts. There was five, there was a two, and there was a one. I believe God gives us today varied amounts. He created us all differently. He knows us all intimately. And so he gives us varied amounts, again, according to his ability. And again, that ability comes from where? From him. So according to his knowledge, he gives us various amounts of resources, various amounts of abilities. He gives them to us. And I don't read in the text here that the guy with five was puffed up and said, I got five. <laughs> Nor do I read that the fellow with two, you gave him five? You gave me two? No. Neither should we. The amount is not important. What's important is what we do with it. I like to look at two reactions, two results, and two rewards. How did they react to what they were given? Well, the one was diligence. They put it to work. The guy with the five and the man with two, they put it to work. Diligence, obedience, hope. That was the reaction of two. But the one responded. And we could say two responses instead of reactions. He responded in laziness, in indifference, in selfishness, and fear. That was his response. But what were the two results that came out of those reactions, out of those responses? For two, what they were giving doubled. It doubled. It increased a hundredfold. The other, there was zero increase. In fact, 
If it was a bag of silver, and I don't know if it was, but if it was, what, what happens to silver when you stick it in the ground? It probably became tarnished. He buried it. His results. Two rewards. For one, it was commendation. Praise. Well done, good and faithful servant. To the other, there was condemnation. To the one, there was to two. There was a huge promotion. You've been faithful in a little. I'll make you rule over much. Went from little to much. From one for the one, it was condemnation cast into outer darkness. If we look at the difference between these two responses, the results and the rewards, what was the difference? Again, as I said, the one had received two and a half times what the other one did. That wasn't important. That wasn't, that, it didn't matter the amount. He simply went to work and invested what he was given and it increased greatly. And the result was five more bags of silver when the master returned. For the other, there was two more bags of silver. It was about being faithful. But look at the response of the unfaithful, wicked servant. I find it interesting. What did he say? You're a hard man. You reap where you don't sow. And suddenly, and God called him lazy and wicked. But instead of taking responsibility and, and agreeing, no, he turns it around and starts blaming God. Starts blaming the master. You just want to use me. You just want to reap where you didn't even sow. You just want to use me. You're, you're a hard man. You're not fair. And oh, folks, how often do we hear, that's not fair. <laughs> It's not fair. How often do we hear the blame game? You know, the blame game showed up in the fall, showed up immediately when sin entered. And I'm going to tell you, the blame game is alive and well today. If you're a parent here today and you raised some children, you know, well, she did that to me. <laughs> yeah. We know the blame game. If you're a pastor, I've heard the blame game. Yeah. If you're a teacher, you've heard the blame game. It's alive and well. You know, well, my parents never had any money. I was never gifted the way that person was gifted. My children always get picked on. My, my, uh, my friends, they, they, they're the ones that drug me into it. Oh, it's all over. And that's what this guy does. He turns it around. He's a lick, wicked and lazy servant. He turns around and blames the master. Folks, we don't need a blame game and we don't need a pride show either. I got five. I only got one. No. It's not important. Not important at all. What is important is faithfulness. What was the difference? 
What was the difference? Faithfulness, not the amount. It was faithfulness. It was attitude. So how do you use the things, the resources that God gave you? The time, the money, the ability, the, 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 the intellect, all the things that God gave you, the insights that God gave you. How can you invest those for eternal investments that bring great rewards for the kingdom of God? How can you do that? So many ways. But Jesus gives us one way. He shows us in the next verses one way. Examples of eternal investments. Let's read verses 31 to 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set his sheep on his set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. The righteous and the unrighteous. What was the difference? When you look at these people that, and by the way, again, this is not a story. This is reality. This will happen, folks. It's going to happen. Jesus said it's going to happen. And perhaps it's happening today. I don't know. But it's going to happen. What was the difference? What was significant about the righteous? What is significant about the righteous? If I would boil it into a couple of words, I would say life is about others. And for the unrighteous, life is about myself. That's perhaps oversimplifying it, but that's at the core of it. The righteous simply saw needs around them, see needs around them, and meet them. And sure, not all needs are listed here, but they simply see needs around them and meet them. It's not front page flashy stuff. Sometimes it may be, but it is simply meeting needs around me. Here's a lonely person that needs a visit. Here's a, a prisoner that needs Christian fellowship. Here's a person that has need of clothes and food. Here's a person that just needs input from someone else in their lives. That's the difference. Life about others and life about self. Because when life is about others and we meet needs of others, Jesus said, you are doing it to me. You are doing it to me. There's no way around it, folks. You and I are in this story, in this account. We are in it. Mm -hmm. We're in it. Where do we fit in it? There are needs, so many needs. Javen's going to Jamaica to help a ministry with needs on that island. Sarah has been at Fair Play for a number of several years. Mitchell is there. 
A lot of you have served in various places. You've been there and you're meeting needs in, 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 in places away from home and it's great and let's continue to do it folks. Let's continue to meet it but let's not neglect the needs in Elkhart and LaGrange County either. And let's certainly not neglect the needs in Woodlawn Church. Like I said, there's people that need prayer. There's people that need encouragement. There's people that need affirmation. There's people that need visits. There's people that need someone to just sit down and talk to. Who meets those needs? That servant. No, that servant. How about the servant in your mirror? How about the servant in your mirror? I don't have much to offer. The little guy with two fish. He didn't have a whole lot to offer Jesus, did he? But he gave Jesus those two little fish, and Jesus fed 5,000. Yes, he did. Some time ago, I was chatting with an older brother, and he was telling me he's continued to work well past retirement age. And he's telling me, he said, you know, God has given me health and ability to continue to, to work and to earn and I choose to do so because I have family that need my assistance. And I blessed him. I said, praise the Lord, keep it up. There's needs, so many needs. From right here in our county, and yes, at Fair Play and in Jamaica, wherever. There's needs. And those needs will be met by the servants of Jesus Christ. That's all those needs are designed to be met. And that's you and I. So Gene's going to lead us in a couple verses of Just As I Am. And we need care group leaders. So if you could respond. No, I'm just kidding. There are needs. Someone needs to teach Sunday school. Someone needs to do vacation Bible school. Someone needs to fund the ministries. Someone needs to do the encouraging, the affirmation. And God gave every one of you time, resources, abilities, wisdom, Maybe he gave you one bag. Maybe he gave you two or three or four or five. Doesn't matter. The amount he gave you, put it to work. What he gave you, put it to work. God will bless it. God will use it. It will meet needs. And most of all, it will bring glory to him. And that is worship. Bringing glory to him by the things that we do. We think, I think Jean said that earlier, worship, sure, it's great to worship here in church. In fact, I love worship here in church. But worship happens all week long as we minister to others and meet needs because that brings God glory. And that's true worship when God, when glory is given to God. Let's bow our heads. I'm just going to ask you in this moment of silence would you allow the Holy Spirit to show you needs that you could meet ask him to show you
And then ask the Holy Spirit to empower you, strengthen you to meet those needs. Our Father God, it is such a great privilege to be your servant, to be your servants. You have called us. You have accepted us in the beloved because of Jesus. Not because we're good, but because you love us and because of your grace that you have showered upon us so freely. And we have the privilege today to be your servants. And Lord, we live in a world that desperately needs answers, that desperately needs help. And God, if there's needs that we can meet right here at church, right here in Goshen, right here Indiana, and right here in our world. God, help us to do that. Empower us. Strengthen us. May we hear from you, be led by you. And may all the glory, honor, and praise be to you. We praise you. We love you. In the name of Jesus, amen. In just a moment, Gina, Christina, Sam, and Brenda, your song was good enough to hear again. If you'd come up and sing that as a closing, I'd like for you to do that. Uh, we'll pause if anyone has a comment before we close. Can you read it for me? Take thou for the talent from oh. him and give it unto him that which hath ten talents. Uh, I'll decline. Pardon? I'll decline to, to share that. The point is, what he had was taken away. That's the point. Oh, I give it to the guy with ten. I can't tell you, David. Anyone else? All right. Sam's and Jeans, if you come up and sing that song again, that'll be our closing today. God bless you. God go with you. Spirit, we 
are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living water. You're the everlasting fountain. Comforter and counselor. Take complete control of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.